What is up everybody, it's your boy King Boys Productions and I'm back at it with another reaction video. So today I'm reacting to um, Stephen A. Smith on Charles Barkley, Isaiah Thomas comments. So if you didn't hear, um, Isaiah Thomas' sister actually passed away on Saturday, so rest in peace to her. But um, Isaiah Thomas ended up playing in his game yesterday against um, the Chicago Bulls. He ended up playing when, even though his sister had just passed the night before, which actually a lot of people, a lot of NBA players, you know, tweeted at him. A lot of people from around the sports, you know, all of them tweeted, you know, support of him. Like, you know, I know what this is kind of like. People would be like, I know this is hard on you. Um, I think it's very courageous of you to play and everything. But basically then Charles Barkley said that he shouldn't play. He's It's stupid for him to play, um, that he's going to be a... Um, not an asset, but like the opposite. I can't even think of the word. Not not a liability. He's going to be a liability to his team if he plays this game because of his emotional state and everything. So um, that's what that's what Charles Barkley said. If you didn't know, so we're going to look and see how Stephen A. Smith, who is very passionate on topics, if you don't know who Stephen A. Stephen A. Smith is, you need to know because he's very passionate on topics that people see a lot but um let's just get right into the video here on a much more somber note isaiah thomas played under incredible circumstances last night after finding out that his sister and it looks kind of jacked up because it was aired on tv so they probably Charles couldn't Barkley post it on youtube like with watching but they probably couldn't play it on i'm not like a full thing but here it is with him sitting on the sideline crying like that uh that makes me uncomfortable so that tells me uh he, he's not in, in shape to play I mean, I don't know how this night's gonna turn out, but to be sitting on the sideline a few minutes before the game crying, uh, that makes me uncomfortable for him. Uh, that's just that's just not a good look, in my personal opinion. Before I before I talk about this, I just want to say, I mean, it's not a good. He says, "Oh, it's not a good look." It's not a good look. What are you supposed to do? His younger sister had just passed less than 24 hours before this this whole thing had taken place so what do you want him to do but i think what, he, what was going through his mind was that's what his sister would have wanted him to do was to play this playoff game and i think that's what he what he thought was going through his head but how would you not feel emotional you know it's easter sunday it was easter sunday and all his family was you know grieving and he couldn't he would he wasn't with them uh, so of course you're going to feel some emotion and that's what ticks me off about what Charles Barkley said. And he can he can say whatever he wants because guess what? He can, he can have his own opinion. And I'm not saying it's his opinion. He can think what he wants. But for this situation, I think he should have just shut his mouth. But let's get back into the video. Okay, back with us. Good to see you. Max, I want to start with you. What's your reaction to Barkley's comments there on Isaiah Thomas being emotional? Well, he was ready to play, first of all, Isaiah Thomas. But you have to be so careful... Um, I think I know what Barkley means. Still, you have to be so careful the way you phrase things when someone's family member passes, especially tragically. And, and my mind immediately went to the Todd Heap tragedy, and the headlines about Todd Heap everywhere were, and I apologize to the Heap family for even repeating this, I'm, I'm simply stating what the headlines were, Todd Heap Accidentally, it's hard for me to even say, you know, the, the tragic ending for his three-year-old Oh, yeah, I did hear about um, that. And I was getting angry at the headlines. Because in these situations, people, you look to blame. Your anger needs an object to take. And in the absence of something better, you can get mad at, at a, a headline writer or, or a pundit on television who's expressing something. You have to be so careful. I, it, were I writing the headline about Todd Heap, for example, I would simply say something like, Tr you know, heap family tragedy. And if someone was interested, they can click and read about it. But I found it distasteful and exploitative, even though I understand it's getting out information to even put the details, even as many details as, as there were in the headline itself, because it's such an excruciatingly tragic and painful moment for that family. And I, I, I had the s same kind of reaction to Barkley saying what he said. Um, I understand he was getting a point across, and Barkley, what makes him great on television is that he just tells you what he's thinking. But in this case, I would have liked to see a more careful filter um, because of the, you know, it, because of the particular kind of level of pain it causes the family. 
yep. um, um, uh-huh. what you're talking about. Yeah, Max, I can't make sense of what Charles is saying. And now, I have the utmost respect for Charles Barkley as an independent thinker, as someone I don't with really. a filter and who does this. I think very clearly, not an attempt to get attention, anything he ever says, but in a searching attempt to find truth. I think that's what he was doing here. I think he was trying to find insight and truthfulness and telling us what he might have thought as a teammate. I just can't find where he's right in this in any way. Is he making his teammates uncomfortable? Is that what Barkley's saying? Is he uncomfortable with Thomas playing? I don't know. What I do know is this. There are many people who show up to work while going through personal hardships. Some, when it's tragic. I know that I've had that situation in my life, Max, and I know very well that you have had it yourself. Without trying to make a trite analogy, it's like one of those flashbangs that goes off in your life like they have in the movies. Everything goes numb. You know, you can't, it's almost like you can't That's hear it. That's actually a really good analogy that he just did. Except what just happened to you. And I just saw Isaiah Thomas do one of the most tough things that I can imagine. And that show up onto a basketball court and not just perform, but perform at the highest level. 33 points, shooting over 50%. You can have John Wall's performance this weekend as far as I'm concerned. You can have Draymond's. You can have any other performance from this weekend. I'll take Isaiah's. I will ride with Isaiah through this entire playoffs. A guy like that is the, that is the definition, the embodiment of toughness. And I don't know how in any way he could have made anyone uncomfortable. That team, this league, is better for us for Isaiah Thomas. Well, first of all, I think it's important to point out that I think that Barkley made that statement prior to the game. So in other words, Isaiah Thomas was about to play. Uh, usually when you're televising a game, these guys are out on the court shooting and what have you, and the cameras are following them, showing you footage of them practicing, prepping for the game. And you saw him sitting on the sidelines in tears, and A.V. Bradley was the only one that had to go over to him because obviously they're friends because they grew up in, 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 you know, in neighborhoods near one another. I have not spoken to Charles Barkley about this. I do not know uh, what point that he was making, but knowing Charles Barkley for years the way that I know him, I didn't take any offense to what he was saying. What I deduced from what he was pointing out was that to see the guy, your star player, in that state of mind, you're not saying it as a criticism. You're saying it's uncomfortable because you realize it's so devastating to him, you don't know what to do. And as players... And- so this is the one time I think I really am going to disagree with with Stephen A saying. A lot of the time, Stephen A kind of says what everyone is thinking, but he's he's just the voice of everyone else, and he just says it or everything. But this is probably the one time I have to disagree with Stephen A, is because, I mean, I get what he's trying to say, and I get what Charles Barkley was trying to say, but to sit there and criticize, kind of criticize, I would say it's kind of criticizing him, by saying, oh, it's uncomfortable, an uncomfortable look, because, you know, he's crying. I mean, like, what do you expect the guy to do? I mean, kind of like, I can't remember the other guy's name. Not Max, but the other dude. I can't remember his name, but, um, kind of like he was saying, tragedy happens in everyone's life, and you're still, you still show up to work the next day, you know? If it happens, you know, it's, people still got to show, you know, it's like, you know, people understand, but some people still have to show up to work the next day. So it's not like, it's, but tragedy happens to everyone. It's, I'm not saying, and I'm not saying that, oh, Isaiah Thomas is, is you know, different than everyone else because he, 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 he's kind of different. I mean, he's in the in NBA, which is different than most jobs, but it's still a job at, on, at the end of the day. And I think to criticize someone for doing their job and helping his team, they didn't win, unfortunately, but helping his team have a chance to win last night instead of, you know, going back to Washington where he's from and kind of grieving with his family. It's kind of, it's very powerful, I think, of him. But let's hear what Stephen A. has to say again. And as teammates, yeah, you have an obligation to go out there and perform. And your sister was not the one that died in a car accident, but you love him. And you know how devastating he is. And that in and of itself can end up being a distraction for you because you're actually watching him endure that. If you have a friend, if you have a loved one, and you're seeing them in in the throes of that moment going through what they're going through, I'm not saying that's the word I would use as uncomfortable or whatever the case may be, but I don't think it's something to be criticized for. I think it's one of, you know, that's the way he decided to articulate himself. Keep in mind that he's on the air with, the man himself, the great one, Ernie Johnson, who yeah. blessed us with his presence on the show. I was interviewing Ernie Johnson, and he was talking about his family. And there was a moment there where he just got silent 
because you could see he was holding back tears when he was talking about what's in this book. Well, my instant reaction was to be quiet mm -hmm. and just or to move on from that moment because you're seeing him uncomfortable at that particular moment. Or I was like, OK, I don't know what to do here. Mm -hmm. That's what I got from Charles Barkley. I got a guy that was a basketball player that was imagining himself in that situation with a teammate that's balling and he's devastated and he's going through uh, just just such pain. And you're wondering, my goodness, what do you do here? Thank and that's you for what it highlighting is. that it was before, Barclay, though, because that's, yes. that's a key yeah, point. Barkley seems, go ahead, Max. Barkley seems to have been expressing sympathy to yes. me. I interpreted it as him expressing sympathy, like maybe this guy shouldn't be here yeah. right now. He's going through this enormous, yeah, that um, makes sense. Um, you know, this incredible adversity at the moment. Um, but even in expressions of sympathy, at times like this, it's important to be careful, not in, a, not in terms of like the civility of public discourse, but out of respect to the family because of what they're going through. Um, literally, I know well, you're putting, you know, five or 10 or 15 people, whoever's going through that in that family, 20 people, ahead of the viewing audience. But yes, in those instances, I think you have to. You have to well, be so careful how you phrase things, even in expressions of Okay, so I'm just gonna end it right there. It goes on for about um, about eight more minutes, but I don't really f feel like watching it for that long. But um, I just gotta say my final thoughts on the I and the thing was, um, do I agree with him playing? Um, I wouldn't say he didn't hurt his team at all. He didn't hurt his team at all. If anything, he kept them in the game. You know, he had a clutch three three pointer late to cause the game to even be close at the end. It was like the Bulls had like a nine point lead with like a few minutes left, and Isaiah Thomas hit like this really really clutch three to make it a closer to make it like a two point game or something like that. But um, do I personally think I would have played? No, I don't. If I if I had something like that and I was in the league or if I was in any sort of professional sports. I feel like I definitely would not have played. I would have went home and been with my family. Um, do I think that's what he should have done? I mean, maybe. Maybe that's what he should have done, but, you know, f he's a grown man. He can make his own decisions. I mean, he's 25, whatever, 25 years old. He's a grown man. He can make his own decisions. If he chose to play in that game, he chooses to play. Yes, he feels an overflow of emotion, but that's because of the fact that his sister just passed, you know? You're not gonna just be like, oh, it's fine. No, it's 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 emotional. You know, your sister, is, is, it's gone, whatever. But you're gonna feel emotional. It's not just gonna go away in, in two seconds. You know, it's gonna all be like, oh, it's fine, it's gone, she's gone, whatever. No, it's gonna be emotional. And I understand that, I, under, I kind of understand what Barkley's saying when he, oh, okay, maybe we shouldn't have this happening. Maybe we shouldn't have this guy playing, but he chose to play. And he chose to do it, so you can't really fault fault anybody, and it can't shouldn't really make you feel uncomfortable because the guy chose to play. If you know, if it was another way around, like Brad Stevens had said, you have to play. We you can't miss this game. If it was like that kind of situation, then I would understand, you know, being uncomfortable with him playing and everything, because he was forced to play rather than he chose to play. He chose himself. He's a grown man. He can make his own decisions, and he chose to play in that game. So that's why I personally don't feel uncomfortable at all. Um, but if you did like, please leave a like. Please subscribe for more videos. I'm trying to do some more um, kind of talking, not talking, like sports videos and stuff. But, um, but thank you for watching, and until next time, it's your boy, King Boys Productions. Before I go, actually, like a little P.S., um, leave your comments of what you think um, down below on this whole issue. I want to know what you guys think about it. I want to know if you guys are kind of siding with Charles Barkley more, where you say it's uncomfortable. Can't even see my hand, like, here. Or if you're kind of like with me in, in Max Kellerman, kind of like saying that it's not, it's just what it is, you know. But, um, but yep, until next time, it's your boy King Boys Productions. Squaw.